So Steve Bannon got fired. <laughs> Imagine this, that is the Trump White House. The racist with the big sloppy whiskey nose, gone. The Nazis out. So is that a good thing? I mean, ultimately, I guess. But Trump is just um, out of control. I think we're going to see him get gunned soon, and we're going to have little Mikey Pence come in there with his right-wing madness. Um, so there's this article in The Intercept by Ryan Graham. The White House is now run entirely by hucksters, Democrats, and generals. <laughs> so we're going to go through... Uh, everyone who's left in the White House for Trump and what is going on. So um, so Trump's new chief of staff, of course, is John Kelly. He's a retired general. His national security advisor, H.R. McCaster, is an active duty general and the bane of Breitbart, the far right website Bannon used to run. <laughs> So on Spicer, of course, got fired. Uh, the Minooch, or Mooch, Scare Mooch got gunned after a fantastic 11 days, probably one of the most prestigious 11 days anyone, any frat guys ever had. Um, so the top, Trump's top advisors now are Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. I, I, I know I shouldn't laugh because it's like, hey, this is our country and it's very unsafe right now and it's crazy and a madman's at the helm. But it is just hilarious that this is how ridiculous America is, is that a reality TV guy that's a racist and a sexist and a complete moron, like he's dumb, is now the president of the United States. And, you know... This obviously, as I've said, didn't come out of nowhere. Trump didn't just appear. This is what happens when you have three, four decades of just slow burning insanity. When Reagan became president, people were like, what? He was on a TV show, Bedtime for Bonzo, like no way. And he was a governor of California and he was viewed to be ridiculous. And, um, Bill Clinton, the second Bush, uh, and we all thought, well, many of us at least on the left thought that, oh, Obama was like a, a, like a new FDR and he was going to bring the hope and change and bring respectability back to the White House and all this stuff and stuff. And yes, he is a smart guy. He's respectable in terms of his conduct and he acted very presidential, but he just, you know, as we've talked about, he's taken us from two wars to seven. He created 5.2 million foreclosures. He's bombed civilians. He's deported 2 million people. So now we just have an ugly version of it when you just have corporations running everything. And it's not surprising that a reality TV guy is the president because the corporations run all the mainstream media. 95% of all media is controlled by six corporations, six giant megacorps multinational conglomeration. So they've been making art and TV and everything as dumb as possible. They've been trying to dumb down the population for the last four or five decades, and they've done a great job of it. And when there's no discerning conversation, there's no checks and balances, there's no liberal institutions that are uh, calling people out and, and challenging those that are in power, when those that are in power own and control everything, this is what you get. You get Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump as advisors. Uh, they're a married couple, and that's uh, the, um, uh, you know, she used to run a fashion line, and he inherited it, uh, his father-in-law's real estate empire. Then we got Hope Hicks, as perhaps the most talented figure left in the White House, was working as a spokesperson for the Trump Organization before she was drafted into service of the Trump campaign, and then the White House. She is now acting communications director. Gary Cohn, the senior economic advisor, was president of Goldman Sachs. Oh, the Goldman Sachs crew that have won every single presidency, every single presidential election since Reagan. Um, as a Democrat before going to work for Trump, so Gary, just, just if you're wondering if the two parties are any different from each other, Gary Cohn, was the president of Goldman Sachs and a Democrat before working for Donald Trump. So this is why the Democratic Party's hashtag resist is laughable. 
because they're all part of it, okay? Dinah Powell, another senior advisor and a New York liberal, also came from Goldman Sachs. <laughs> Two liberal Democrats from Goldman Sachs. So it just shows you how the neoliberal and the corporate Democrat are just bullshit. They're just bullshit. They're just pro-choice Republican. Like what, 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 what is she liberal about? Probably pro-choice, right? Probably gay marriage. And then goes to her high rise mansion in New York and doesn't care about the poor and screws people out, you know, and pushes out poor people from government housing so she can build condos or whatever, but you know, like, fuck you. It's unbelievable. Uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, of course, was CEO of ExxonMobil, and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin came from the banking world. Stevie Mnuchin run, he ran One West Bank that did robo signing, that did stuff like buying bulk mortgages at 30 to 40% of their value and forcing people out of their homes. I was one of those people. Steve Mnuchin helped force me out of my home. The Attorney General of the State of California at that time was Kamala Harris. She did not prosecute Steve Mnuchin, neither did Obama. You're beginning to figure this out? Any of your friends who think that their party is, is better than the other party, show them all of this. Um, so it's just, it's just hilarious what they're doing. Like who's going on here? And let's, let, let, me, let me say this, who in the White House is gonna handle that portfolio? Said Sam Gooding, a Republican lobbyist who works closely with the Freedom Caucus. There is a lack of a conservative who, cons who, conserva who conservatives view as one of their own in this White House and that could impact the congressional agenda. Like there's a difference between some Goldman Sachs liberal, like a Goldman Sachs Democrat and a Goldman Sachs Republican what's the difference? One just wants to shoot gays with their gun, the, but they're both exploiting the poor. Good God. The most senior figure in the White House with real political experience may just be Mick Mulvaney, a burn it all down former congressman from South Carolina who was swept in by the Tea Party wave. He is the director of the Office of Management and Budget. <laughs> oh... I would love to see what an actual democracy would look like because I don't think I've seen one in my lifetime. All I've seen is like a kleptocracy and a oligarchy and I've never seen a democracy. I don't know what it is. And now we're just seeing the most ridiculous circus version of it is unbelievable. Um, the most senior figure in the administration, more broadly, uh, who has conservatives trust is Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who Trump recently went to war against. <laughs> His former aide, Stephen Miller, is similarly trusted by conservatives. He was an obscure figure until recently, but he may be the far right's best hope. Then there's also Tom Price, a former conservative member of Congress who is now Health and Human Services Secretary, but he was publicly humiliated just last week. Price declined to declare the opioid epidemic an emergency and was overruled in grand fashion by Trump. And before the most recent vote on repealing the Affordable Care Act, Trump joked to a crowd of Boy Scouts that he'd fire Price if he failed. Trump's has 35 support. Um, meanwhile, is concentrated uh, readers of Breitbart which Bannon may return to. But no matter what Bannon does or says, his firing will be seen by some of his base as a betrayal of the cause, further eroding his support, leaving Trump further isolated. This is like crazier than what Nixon did in the final days. I mean, this is Hitler in the bunker, just firing everybody and I'm gonna attack and invade. You're fired, you're hired. He's out of his mind. My prediction, Trump will not make it to the end of the year. He will be out. And then we'll have to deal with Mike Pence's nonsense. But at least Mike Pence, you could kind of pin him down. You know, you could get him in an interview and call him out on his nonsense versus this wing bird. So more shenanigans coming out of the, the orange skin uh, White House. Little Donnie, little trust fund Donnie. He's never worked a day in his life. Firing people and driving this country into the ground.